Today I've got the Barazza Sette 270 and the Niche Zero on this table. We're gonna compare the two and I'm gonna tell you which grinder you should buy. Let's go. Hi, my name is Kyle Rossell and I want to help you brew better coffee at home. It would really mean a lot to me if you smash that subscribe button before we get started here. We're gonna be doing some grinder comparisons like these ones and we're gonna be doing some lower and entry level grinders soon as well to compare. So if you want more grinder comparisons, more coffee content, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to smash that like button and let's get diving into this. So today I have the Barazza Sette 270 and I have the Niche Zero grinder on this table. And today we're gonna to take a few minutes to compare these grinders. Now, I'm really excited about this one because I've actually owned both of these grinders for a while, but I've owned the Niche Zero for about six months now. I actually just finished my six month review and I'll link that up above. And so I wanna take a few minutes to compare these grinders and I wanna explain why. These grinders are both great espresso grinders for home. Now that's important because these are not gonna be found in a cafe. These are meant for the home barista to make espresso at home. The Sete comes in at about $399 and the Niche Zero at around $700. So these two are not comparable in price, but their features for espresso are very comparable. And I wanna talk about why you would consider spending extra on the Niche and what these two are really different and what these two really shine at. $3.99 is still a lot of money for a coffee grinder, but when it comes to espresso, it's probably the cheapest option you can get to get into good quality espresso at home. So why spend the extra money? Why upgrade to the Niche Zero? Should you just get the Barazza Sette? We're gonna dive all into that in this video. So let's start off about what they are and talk about some of the specs of these two machines. Let's start off with the Niche Zero. The Niche Zero is a 63 millimeter conical burr grinder. It's designed for single dosing and there is no hopper on this grinder unlike the Barazza Sette. So that means you are only putting in the coffee that you are about to grind. You're not gonna be putting in a full bag of coffee. There's no hopper to do that. It's designed for single dosing. This has a beautifully quiet motor and we're gonna talk about that later on in this video and we're gonna compare the noise of these two grinders. But it's got a beautiful stepless adjustment system and it can go from very fine Turkish grind all the way up to a coarse grind. This one has infinite settings and that's one thing that's really good about this grinder. The niche also boasts a beautiful aluminum body and oak trimmings and it can come in both black and white, whatever you prefer. The Niche Zero is designed and developed in the UK by a father-son company, and they are not mass produced. They are sometimes hard to even find because so many people want them and they're not enough to go around. So that's the Niche Zero, a great grinder. I do have a full review about that. I will link that up above, but that is this grinder. But let's go over to the Barazza Sette 270 and kind of the highlight or the featured grinder of this video. Now the Barazza Sette is a very different grinder in every category except its results than the Niche. The Barazza Sette 270 uses a 40 millimeter burr set. Again, a conical burr set, but it uses a very unique grind through technology unlike many grinders in today's market. The Barazza Sette is designed in Seattle but it is a mass produced product from Barazza as they are one of the bigger grinder companies in the world. As I already mentioned it has a grind through technology and we're going to talk more about that later on in this video. The Barazza Sette is unique in that it has both a stepped grinder setting but also stepless as well. You can really dial in that espresso grind to exactly what you need it to be at. And the Barazza Sette is also great because you can grind right into the portafilter, but you can actually grind into a basket that it comes with as well. And it can hold the portafilter in there too, unlike the Niche, where it grinds into a little 58 millimeter basket. Now, in this video, I wanna do a sifting test. I wanna compare what the results are from this grinder and see how consistent those grinds are, how many fines are in there, how many boulders are in each grind. I wanna compare the volume of these grinders. I wanna talk about build quality. I wanna talk about reliability, but ultimately I wanna talk about which grinder you should choose, especially considering which situation you are currently in. Now I'm gonna put this aside for a second. I wanna get right into what the niche does and how to use it real quick. I've already touched on this in other videos. So again, if you want more in-depth reviews on the niche, this isn't the video for that. I've got other videos for that. But real quick, to use the Niche, it's got a single dosing hopper. You simply pour your beans right in from your dosing cup into the hopper, turn it on, 
It's got a safety feature here. You can actually turn on the grinder with the plastic up, but you turn this on and it grinds your coffee. It doesn't have an auto off. It's not fancy by any means. It is bare bones in terms of technology, but it gets the job done and it gets the job done very well. The Sete 270 on the other hand has lots of bells and whistles. And so this is going to have a, a smaller gearbox and uh, it's, it's much louder, but it does the job very well and for almost half the price, which is definitely a factor within this comparison. So the Sete 270 again has a hopper. And so you're going to pour your beans right in here. Now the Sete, although it does have a hopper, I would not recommend you using that. I would always recommend you to single dose your coffee. What does that mean? Well, just like the niche, you are only putting the coffee in that you're about to use. Never fill your hopper up. Never try to grind on demand. Always have fresh beans that are stored well and single dose so that you have the best results and most consistent results with an espresso as well. Now, the nice thing with the Sete is it does have time features on here if you do decide to use the hopper. And so if you want to dump a bag of coffee in here and leave it, then you can do that and you can dial in a time setting to be able to try to consistently get the same amount of coffee out of your grinder. Again, I don't recommend doing that, but the option is there. It does have a little rubber mat to catch your grinds bins. And like I mentioned earlier, it can hold your port filter in these little arms here. I'll show you. And like that, you can grind, walk away, do some other things, come back and take your port filter. But I must say the Sete over the years has actually become known for lack of reliability within these grinders. That being said, Bratz has always been incredible in servicing equipment and replacing units that have gone bad, but their gearboxes have been known to be faulty on the Sete 270. I have heard they've actually upgraded this recently, but I actually did lose a gearbox on one of my Sete 270s. I had to replace my unit and it actually left me without a machine for a few days. I think it was almost a week. So this machine, while being high horsepower and quick, it's loud and they're known not to be incredibly reliable. That being said, the grind quality on the Sete 270 is incredible. And we're gonna talk more about that shortly. But for the price, the Sete 270 is a great grinder for any espresso machine. Be that if you've got a Gaja Classic Pro or if you've got a Linea Mini on your espresso bar. I've seen both of those things and anything in between use a Sete 270 on their coffee bar. And there's a good reason for that. It's good value and it creates good, good grinds. But what I want to do now is I want to take both of these grinders and put them through a sifter test. I have a Kruv sifter, and this is an incredible little piece of equipment that was lent to me by a friend. I'm going to link his Instagram down below. Do me a favor, go give him a follow. He's an incredible human being. His name is Josh. So I'm going to test out these two grinders and put them through a sifter test to see their grinding consistency. But I'm also going to use this to compare some other grinders on the entry level market and then compare these against some of the budget friendly grinders in the next weeks to come. So if you want to see those videos, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those and turn notifications on to make sure that you know when those videos become available to you. For this video, I actually dialed in both of these grinders for the similar grind size we're going to use to test this. They're pulling very, very similar grind sizes and I don't think I can get it any closer than what they're at right now. I'm going to put them both through the crew at both a 600 micron and 300 micron setting and see what kind of consistency we get from both grinders. Now, ultimately, is this the end all be all? No, but I think this is a good scientific test where we can compare both grinders with measurable results beyond subjective taste for these grinders. Because if I say this grinder tastes better than this one, you might not agree. So I'm gonna grind up about 20 grams of coffee each for these grinders and then compare that. Let's do that. Now I thought while we were grinding the niche, I would actually pull out a app on my phone to measure the decibels that this grinder produces. Is this the best way to do it? Probably not, but this is how I'm gonna do it today. So holding the phone right up against this grinder, it was reading about 83 decibels and I'm using an iPhone 12 with a free app that I downloaded. So, so let's get this and put this in the sifter. Now again, this is the Kruv sifter and what this does is it really just measures the consistency in grind in your coffee grinder. And so that's what I'm gonna use this for today. So you can check this out, it's the Kruv sifter. I'll link it down below. 
Okay, so this is shaking up and we're ready to start weighing this out. I'm going to weigh how many fines and how many boulders are in this, this comparison here. This is actually kind of crazy. How few fines this thing produces. Sheesh. Okay, so I've got 0 0.2, 0 0.2 grams of fines, which is barely anything. We've got about 8.6 grams for the coarse grind here, which should leave us with about 11 grams of in between 300 and 600 microns. So, and just over 11 grams on here, so. But let's get over to the sete and let's do the exact same test, including the noise test. Okay, so I have cleaned out the sifter and I have weighed out 20 grams of beans. Now we're gonna test the decibel level of the sete compared to the niche. Let's do this. Now, I don't know about you, I don't know if you could tell from my microphone, but this grinder is so much louder. It is a loud, loud grinder. And it's not even so much the volume levels, it's just the frequency. It's sharp, it sounds like a little engine in your house. That is a large part to do that. It is a plastic chassis compared to a metal chassis. So it's not gonna contain that volume. It's not gonna condense those noises as much as this grinder will. But again, you're getting what you pay for. And this was peaking out at just over 85, uh, 87, and there's that. So let's get sifting here. Okay, we got this. Now let's measure this out. Can you get some more cups? It looks like the sete actually had very few fines as well. We got about 0.1 grams on the fines, 10.1 grams on the boulders, which leaves 9.9 .9 grams for the rest of the grinds. The niche actually was slightly more consistent on the grinds that we wanted. There were less fines on the sete, 0.1 grams. Literally, we're talking about dust. I wouldn't count that, that doesn't count. But for the boulders, I mean, you've got a, a few grams of a difference. So the niche is more consistent, not night and day though. Again, you're talking about twice the price of a machine for this. So uh, we've done the test, we've compared both of them in consistency. I made some drinks before this and compared the taste in these as well. Now this part's subjective and I don't wanna to spend too much time on this because I, you shouldn't listen to me in which one tastes better. I can tell you what I think but ultimately it's really up to you. I do think the niche tastes just, just slightly better. I think that the burr design on the 63 millimeter Mauser burrs are designed incredibly well. And I like the fact that it can do filter. So let's talk about that for a second. While these two grinders are incredibly comparable in, in grind consistency and even quality, there's one thing that really sets these two grinders apart. That's the fact that the niche can do filter coffee incredibly well. The sete says and advertises that it can do filter coffee and in my experience, honestly, it can't. The sete might be able to do AeroPress or brew methods that require a finer grind, but the niche can do anything from V60 all the way up to Chemex. And that really, for me, sets it apart. While it is double in price, if you're going to buy another grinder, you might wanna consider if you might as well just buy one grinder that can do everything. When I had the sete, I also used another grinder. I used the Brazza Encore for filter. When it came down to the price, both grinders ended up equaling around the same price as the niche. Now, some people might actually prefer having two grinders, but for me, the clean bar is nice. And so for me, I love having one grinder over two. That ultimately comes down to you. Do you want one grinder that is dialed in and you don't have to worry about swapping between brew methods? Or would you like one grinder to clean up your coffee bar? Think about that. Now, a few more things before we wrap up this video. When it comes down to retention, I'm not even going to take apart these grinders to weigh the retention because at the end of the day, they're both very, very low. And so don't base this decision on retention because I would say both of these grinders are in the top tier for retention. The Niche Zero is incredible and so is the Sete. Because it has that grind through design from Barazza, it is incredible for retention. And so if that's something you're considering, then you should be good for both of these grinders. Let's talk about aesthetic real quick and build quality. The Niche is built out of aluminum with oak finishes and the Barazza Sete is made out of completely plastic with a metal burr adjustment. So I really don't think there's much to compare here. The Niche wins. I mean, when it comes down to aesthetics in terms of what looks better, that's subjective and you decide, but when it comes down to build quality, 
the niche wins. So let me know in the comments down below what you prefer. Do you, do you like the appliance design of the Barazzo with its stainless steel and plastic design? And it, it looks like a seven, which is kind of cool. Or are you a fan of the niche and, and its unique juicer blender like look? Let me know in the comments down below. At the end of the day, when it comes down to which grinder you should buy, this ultimately comes down to your situation that you're in. If you want a grinder that can brew great espresso but doesn't break the bank, the Barazza Sette is the option for you. But if you want a grinder that does all of your coffee needs in one package, the Niche Zero is it. If you also want a grinder with better build quality, something that will last you more than a few years, the Niche is it. But again, the Barazza Sette is an incredible grinder. Be aware that the Barazza Sette has been known to have issues in the past, but the Niche Zero is new. And so only time will tell how long these machines last. But based on my experience so far, I don't think we're gonna have any issues. Hopefully that helped you in your decision to buy these two grinders. If you haven't yet, I would love if you subscribe down below. It really does help. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers before the end of 2020. And if you like this video, hit that like button to let YouTube know that this is a video they should share. And in the meantime, continue to brew great coffee and continue to brew at home. Peace, we'll see you next time.